모닝 파워 모닝 터보 Welcome to the SSL Classic. It's another Thursday evening here in Seoul, South Korea. My name is Wolf. With me is Rapid. And we are going into four matches tonight that should be pretty incredible. Three of which, though, will be mirrors. Yeah, so lots of mirror matches. So no matter how much you think about or talk about balance, tonight it may just not matter. And we're going to be starting things out with an epic rematch between Effort and Solki from their ASL series that they just played a little bit earlier on the day. And you guys may be able to hear a few of the cheers from our crowd because we have a ton of people coming out to watch tonight's games. That's right. The center of the studio is completely packed and everyone seems really energized this evening. Obviously, there's fan favorites at the studio every week because this is a round robin format so if you're tuning in a little bit later if this is your first SSL Classic day just like SSL Premier it's not like your traditional Star League where you actually have a round of 32 a round of 16 or group stage type play it's actually just a longer round robin league play format like you would imagine from Pro League so everyone plays against everyone else once yeah, and we're actually almost halfway through our initial round robin. Uh, we get, to, I think, seven weeks of play, and then we move into a gauntlet-style playoff bracket, and then eventually crown our winner for the SSL Classic. Actually, most of the SSL series are kind of wrapping things up. We've got Fastlane coming up in uh, SSL Challenge. That's right. And uh, yeah, lots of StarCraft here at the SSL, but it's all about Rude War here today. And today's matches will actually be pay played on the most recent update. It's patch 1.18. That's right. The Of course, the hotfix bug fix is coming in for the hotkeys, for example. Because right. um, that was a big problem, obviously, with the first iteration of 1.18. Yeah. But it's no longer an issue to where when you're holding down your mouse key, you won't be able to make your hotkeys. Because that's kind Somewhat of an issue. problematic, yeah. Sure. Uh, but but uh, we're going to have the U, uh, UI back to the Observer UI we had last time. So you're going to be able to see the player's first-person view boxes on the minimap as well as the resource counter. Yeah, and so if you're coming either from another RTS or maybe from StarCraft 2 and are watching uh, Brood War for maybe your first time, there's going to be a little bit more information than traditionally. So hopefully that'll be able to uh, help you kind of play along with us. And uh, for us, we'll probably be pointing out uh, some build orders. If you want to copy those, you can see exactly what supply players build buildings on or make units on. So it's really helpful for figuring out exactly what uh, the players are doing so that you can emulate it when you go back and play Brood War and inevitably cry about how <laughs> difficult it is and how good all these players are. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standings. Yeah, of course, Light down at the bottom, really the uh, disappointment of the league so far. He did have one loss, death loss, uh, due to injury, but he hasn't taken a series yet, and his series against Sock this evening is going to be a difficult one in the TVT, but Rain took his first loss, so it was a big tie t with Rain, Mine, Sulky, and Sock up there, the top four in uh, first place, but I feel like when you look at these four, it's tough to pick a clear favorite so far in this tournament. A lot of people pointing towards Rain, but with Solki looking good in the ASL, could be either one of those two, I really feel. Yeah, absolutely, and I think Rain, big surprise for me, was getting, dropping out of the ASL so early on. So now it's just about focusing on the SSL, and uh, one of our players tonight will be the first to break uh, 1 million won. One from today or from the, his play here in the SSL Classic, so uh, it's just going to be cool. Lots of money being uh, not given away, but uh, being won every single day per match. And as well, if you do come down here to the Nexon Arena, all of your tickets uh, prices, the money that you pay for tickets to attend, uh, gets added to the prize pool. So that's going straight back into the players. So lots of money on the line in the SSL Classic. That's right. So do come down here and check it out. We have a ticket link uh, that comes up at the end and beginning of our broadcast every day but if you come down to the studio as long as you come early enough you uh, can stand in line and grab a ticket pretty cheap and uh, you should yeah. be able to get a seat but if you want to guarantee your seat obviously pick that up at home go to the ticket link link that uh, will be posted later on we have our special thanks with our ticket holders at the end of the broadcast so just kind of putting that out there so you guys know that's going to be the best way to actually get esports tickets at uh, multiple esports studios that charge for tickets right now. It's a ticket link, so get used to using it if you live here in Seoul and want to come down to some esports events. All right, so we are going to set things up here for our first match of the night. His name is Solki. He is a Zerg God, has been for a while. 
one of the most accomplished uh, foreign uh, Koreans who played in foreign countries over the course of his StarCraft 2 career. He's come back here to Korea to StarCraft 1, and he is looking great, defeating the undefeated Rain last week. Yeah, at the very end of Rude Wars Pro League and all throughout StarCraft 2, this is one of the better players uh, in this league in terms of recent results. And people are really surprised he's doing so well, but when you look at what he was doing at the end of the Kespa era of Rude War, it shouldn't really be that big of a surprise they would be able to drop StarCraft 2 because he transitioned earlier than some of the players moving back to Rude War, get back into form, get his hands back in that Brood War mode, and, <laughs> and start killing it. And so far, so good for a Zerg player year. Yeah, well, speaking of so good, his opponent on the other side of the Nexon Arena is going to be a very familiar face. This is Kim Jong-woo, or Effort, one of the most storied Zerg players to ever play the game. He's got a Korean Air Jet modeled after him for his uh, OSL performance, and he's coming back here into the SSL to take on Soul Key for the second time this week. That's right, only taking the loss to Hero with a build order loss where Hero took a very greedy early pool and Effort had a very risky strategy so when those two builds combined Effort got crushed there in his very first SSL Classic match but his other two he looked solid so looking to win his second ZVZ here against Sulky. But you compare these two players in terms of accomplishments in individual leagues, Effort is the more accomplished player, but in recent times, Sulky has looked stronger. That's right. So let's go ahead and get into our first game of the night, Sulky versus Effort. Here for our players and our sponsor. What a way to go ahead and get things started. So, in the white on the upper right hand side, this will be our Zerg player, Soul Key. That's right, this uh, new 1.18 UI makes it easier for us to tell who's who in mirrors as well. As you can see, it will be brought up here once more. And to the bottom right, it is Effort, former CJ Zerg, an OSL champion. Uh, that famed intro with Flash oh opening his arms uh, in the opening video, but in the opening to the grand finals, the players coming off of the plane themselves, Flash being so famed at the time, uh, you know, really at, at that time, the faker of esports, and he was defeated by effort in that finals, and that's really where part of his big reputation comes, as well as his really strong mm -hmm. play on CJ Entis. But Solki at the time, was really considered by most to be kind of a B-tier player. He had a really good run to the Kespa Dream League, but never really much in individual leagues until StarCraft II. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the uh, builds coming out. Uh, it looks like it will be a nine pool for Soul Key, and then for Effort, he did go for the Extractor trick to get one extra drone out. And, uh, oh, okay, that's a little weird. Going for an in-base hatchery after canceling what I can only imagine was a, either a drone or an overlord. Yeah, wanted to get that hatch up a lot faster here, so obviously this is going to give him a lot more larva, but uh, so it's it, it's not going to help him in terms of saturation early on. This is likely to be some sort of all-in. Yeah, this is some wacky, I don't want to call it a cheese, but this is just something that we really don't see in ZBZs. Either you go 12 pool, 12 hatch, or 9 pool with maybe an over pool thrown in there. And so for Soul Key, this looks totally standard. It's going for 9 pool, probably going to come out with 6 lings and try to get some early map control. Uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly what these are that are being produced. Forever, in-base hatcheries are uh, a really interesting thing because it does depend on whether or not you're scouted. Uh, and that's not going to happen for either player. It'll take them quite a while to find each other. So if he's going to have a ton of extra larva, and that is the resource in uh, StarCraft you use to build units as Zerg. So I know this sounds really obvious, but if he actually, when, this, when these links get here, if he has his own set, double sets of links coming out, he crushes this fight and counterattacks, he can do a ton of damage. So he just needs a little bit of time. Obviously his oh, first six man. links are coming out, but when this hatch finishes, he's going to be able to make eight, 10, eventually 12 links off of this. So the defensive capabilities here, if he micros his drones well, I definitely have to give a massive edge to effort. And yeah, Ling's turn around here, 
Yeah, and I think he's no hatch, and he's like, I'm not even going to try this. I could end up walking into a trap. Right. Uh, ZBZ, in case you guys are new to this matchup in Brood War, is like, uh, what is it, like a, a knife fight on rollerblades. You just, any little tiny mistake, and you're going to just lose things. And it's, it's, it's amazing to me every time to see how carefully balanced this matchup is. Look at how much care is taken into positioning uh, your Zerglings in that tiny little arc on the other side. Uh, so I think there's a little bit of a maybe here's, a mistake. Here's <laughs> what I want to. Okay, so uh, there's a lot to explain really quickly. I think that first of all, this is a effort kind of going for a blind encounter because he's known for going for greedy builds. That's why he got crushed by Hero. He's gone for a blind counter this, but because there's no hatchery, it was so shocking to Sulky that he didn't fast expand because that's effort style in this matchup that he just went to the other spawn. Now, of course, verifies that's not the case. But look at this defensive setup here on the high ground. Or effort. He's making oh two links by one. And this is just how the high ground advantage works. If you are positioned correctly, you can have it so basically constantly you have two versus one in terms of links or three versus two. Just always have one up on oh your opponent. And now you just with speed finishing for both players, the better larva count goes to effort, which is why he made that in base hatchery. We see the transition back at home to Mutas. It's gonna be very hard pressed to hold this though, even just now making that sunken colony. Yeah, so sunken will come up here, and this is the big surprise factor. It's like, oh my god, you you have way more lings than you should from that in-base hatchery. Now Effort will try to break up a ramp of his own. He does have a Zergling advantage and immediately you can see Sulky just gives up the ramp. It, controlling these lings to protect the sunken colony is going to be absolutely critical. See how many Effort actually commits to. He's rallying more and more up the ramp now. I think he's just going to try to go in and burst this down. Here he goes, running in. He's making sure his lings are positioned so that the sunken cannot be surrounded here by the lings coming in from Ever. View coming on the bottom side. Drone's going to drill here for the fight. So far, the hold oh, is good. Oh, man. Yeah, that is, uh, that's really bad. At that point, taking out of the sunken is not your priority. You're going to have a slower uh, spire, so you really just want to get in there and kill as many drones, I think, as possible. But anytime Zerglings go into a mineral line, it's basically the worst place for Zerglings to be because drones just screw up their micros so much. So uh, that was a big win for Solky who has all but held off Effort's aggression and now has earlier, faster Mutalists on the way. Yeah, Effort is actually forced to make an evolution chamber so that he can actually get the uh, spores up to actually hold this as uh, he doesn't even have a lair whatsoever even begun because he pulled drones out of gas so that he had more mineral mining to produce double hatch ling and he basically was forcing it all in. He still has to make this work right here, right now. He has a defense at home, but he's a burst down the sunk and he will get most of the bottom one here, but I feel like the losses are already quite severe in terms of his zergling count. And Mutalist cannot be killed by effort in this situation. They just cannot be. He has uh, the spores coming up back at home. The spore crawly about to finish, but Map control will now forever belong to Soki. Yeah, now uh, one thing that we should point out is that the uh, economy is going to be much better for effort. He's producing off of an extra hatchery, uh, so he's going to be able to just make more drones if he was making those back at home. He's probably been putting them mostly into the Zerglings. They're going to come in again, and this is what you can do. You can catch your opponent off right as they make Mutalist. You've got a ton more Zerglings, and it looks like effort will get a lot of damage done. Yeah, you will. He needs to get the Sunk in here. It's actually still quite healthy. He's killing drones. The Mutalist is still oh alive. My he's going to finally get the Sunk in here. The one mute is doing what he can. The drones are actually microing. He holds Whoa. once again, but his economy is totally in shambles. Yeah. The mutalist harass over here much less significant <laughs> because he's just working on this Evo chamber. But the the not only the economy, but as you mentioned, the larva count uh, for effort means that he just has nonstop production, and that was finally the. I guess the last straw that broke the camel's back in terms of getting in there, getting that sunk in, and also getting the drone count down to like, what, he's got four, I believe now? Yeah, uh, this is like when you uh, you get the evil genie and you make a wish for immortality, and you become like an immortal amoeba. You know, that's that's like this, uh, this mutalist. He's like, well, nothing can ever kill you, but you actually just can't do any damage. So the least little mutalist that definitely couldn't, uh, they're going to be able to take out this Evo Chamber eventually, uh, but with a lair on the way. This is all about whether or not Effort can hang on himself until he has Mutalisks of his own. I think this game is really just slowed to a crawl, but I, I, when the dust settles, it's hard to say who's really ahead here, because in terms of production, obviously, eventually, Effort will catch up, but he only just now has the lair. It's going to take him a long, long 
time to actually get enough to defend, and he can't defend his natural against the Beelist, so he can never right. take that. And it looks like he's just going to send another wave of Zerglings across the map. Oh, Killing his extractor would be huge, yeah, by the way. He needs that money to build Mutalus to eventually overpower the Mutas of Sulky. Yeah. And ironically enough, Mutalus that can't actually go kill that extractor uh, because of the Spore Colony right there. Oh, this might go get... here from Sulky. Really well done. Beautiful drone drill here, and it's oh going to be God. even a miracle if, so if Ever can find any more drone kills. He can't, and this is really evening things up. What a weird kind of style of a game to see as our first game out. Totally different than the last two times these players faced off. I don't know if he even has enough. Okay, I was going to say, he hasn't started Spire on our screen. There it is. I was like, does he not even have enough money for that? Um, I forgot we even have the unit or the uh, resource counter because I'm so not used to that. I was like, but, Wolf, it just says right over there. <laughs> yeah, he has uh, 500 gas, in fact, so looking to make the five meters when he can. Oh, this, but this is still a lot of harassment. Now finally wow. starting to get some drones here. As you can see, the money of Sulky is very, very low. Just going to look to kill his extractor. We'll Man. get it. Yeah, that extractor going down is actually a very big deal. Now, uh, with it going down, that means that there's not a whole lot that uh, Sulky Zerglings can really do inside Everett's base. He will have to remake the extractor once he does have enough minerals. Uh, Sulky's economy, though, has just been ravaged over and over again. And yeah, he's had some good defenses, but in Zerg versus Zerg, even just losing any drones can be a big, big If, uh, if Sulky change. is not making mutas right now, he's about to lose air control because Obviously, there are going to be five mutas in total coming out for yeah. effort right now. And he has the two singlings around to make sure there's no hidden base or anything like that. But if he's not making three, he's going to have lost control of that. And in ZBZ, mutas are what it's all about. He doesn't have a single spore colony back at home because he had no money to spare. And he knows this, so backing off now. Wow. It's going to be the first three. The next two will be four and five. And this is actually going to really be what turns the tide in Effort's favor. He's held on long enough, he's defended that extra in-base hatchery, and even though gas and minerals are what uh, you traditionally think is resources, Larva is the big uh, key that is going to give Effort this big advantage. Okay, it looks like uh, I think it's four meters here for Sulky. I know he's going to lose his Overlord as well, which is really frustrating. He did pull it back. Oh, look at this! He's going to try to out micro his opponent, though. I think he's actually a one down, but we can't yeah. see. That's what you can do with your meters. You kind of hide the count there. <laughs> it's so... Uh, it's been really balanced on a knife's edge here, the number of mutilists. If you have, you know, 25 mutilists and your opponent has 26, you lose terribly. So, yeah, all it takes is one more. Uh, and uh, this is uh, this is just really, really careful. And you can actually see that Effort has Lings inside Sulky's base, but Sulky can't go back to deal with them because he knows he has to have his Mutas in the perfect positioning uh, to keep uh, Effort from being able to get any harassment. He also knows that these Lings shouldn't be able to do much if you micro oh, as well. Wow. Guess one drone that was weakened from earlier, but this is just a losing battle of attrition for Sulky. Effort just has the better economy in terms of drones, has the faster hatchery, and had the better mutilus count to take the map control. If these mutas could burst this hatchery down, it'd be huge for Sulky, but that means he has nothing to defend at home, and he will lose a base trade because of the sport crawlers that are already in place at home for Sulky, so, or excuse me, for Effort. Oh, but I think this He's might turning actually around. be too far out of position. Sulky went all the way down to harass that base coming out from the national expansion, and that is going to give Effort an opportunity which he won't take. Wow. Well, uh, he's actually going to commit to the Scourge, which is something you can do when you're kind of behind like this mm -hmm. um, and get a few free mutas if your opponent isn't paying attention. Obviously, with good micro, the Scourge are going to be terrible against the Mutalus. But this is a really a ticking time bomb, that hatchery of efforts at the natural. When that finishes and he gets the extractor up, it's just going to be outproduced. Sulky will if he does not find a way to counter that. He's sending some units again down to the south, but doesn't have units set up for the defense. Here we go. No spores this here. Gonna, this is going to be the big committal. The Mutalists find their way in, and every drone in Sulky's base will die here unless he does try to save it. He has That's the Scourge, but they don't, they're not with the Mutas. Good micro here from Effort. That should be game. He can't yeah. kill the Hatchery anymore. He has to crush these Mutas, and even if he does, <laughs> He's going to be in dire straits, and all he has to do right now is split and escape. Because oh of the spores God. I talked about, is beautiful cloning there, but because of the spores that we've already talked about, we've already seen the main base of effort, this will never be a base trade that Sulky can win. Yeah, and at this point, this is just effort. All he has to do is sit back and wait for Sulky to either GG or come to him. There's a... Uh, uh, 
Yeah, okay, a couple of more drone kills coming out, but there's no way that Sulky will be able to come through here. Everett actually going to lose quite a few moodles. This is one way that Sulky could get back in the game. He just knows there's basically zero drones left. Okay. He's going to sack these mutas to kill the last <laughs> remaining ones. Wow, every drone will die. Sulky has 61 minerals right now, and thanks to this new Overlord, we can in fact see he has built his, his only drone in the egg coming up. There's one left and one more on the way. He like actually made his early. I'm like, ooh, Whoa. too bad. Scourge here for the defense. Nice. This is just no way Sulky wins this fight. Trying GG. to micro as much as he will, but GG it is. An effort will take revenge for his ASL defeat by eliminating uh, Sulky from today. Now it's round robin, so we'll see him later on. But effort with a very surprising in-base hatchery uh, strategy takes Sulky by surprise prize and wins the first game tonight's SSL Classic. So known for playing greedy, really throwing off uh, Sulky's lings there even at the beginning and having the outproduction there to deal with that attack, then having the better economy, the better larva account. Even though he had the slower spire, his crisis management to get that Evo Chamber and to get the Spore Crawler up was basically the almost killing blow there against Sulky. Once right. he had the spores up and no more mining could be denied, he killed the extra extractor too slowly. If he had killed the extractor earlier, maybe he could actually keep up in the mutilus production, but by the time he killed the extractor, there was already 600 gas and he only had two mutas, so it's like, well, you're just going to get out produced no matter what here. Yeah, and I, I was thinking about it earlier, and the way that that game started with Sulky trying to bring his lings all the way up, he actually didn't scout far enough into Effort's base to see the creep, so he backed off a little bit too early, thought he was on the other side of the map, and at that point, yikes, that early nine pool really did not pay off. So. He wanted the hatch real bad, you know? He was like, yeah. I hope he's hatched first, and he wasn't, so Oops. just did not work out. All right, well, that is going to take us out of our first game and into a commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Game two. Thank you.